This is a solid state lithium battery from Yoshino. Now what that means is instead of using a liquid electrolyte like in the LFP batteries and the traditional NMC lithium ion batteries, this one uses a solid electrolyte. Now Yoshino reached out to me and asked if I would review their battery and once I saw what it was, of course I said send it right out. And the advantages of a solid state lithium battery is that as it scales up in size, so does the energy density more so than the other existing types of lithium batteries. So what we're looking at here is a 2600 watt hour solid state lithium battery that has an output of 4,000 watts. 3,700 watts almost. Oh, there we go. It's got two AC outlets and it can output 120 volts at 4,000 watts. And that's not like one of those surge things either. The surge is 6,000 watts. For reference, that's more than the EcoFlow Delta Pro. And I tested this and this is now the only other battery that I've got in my studio beyond the EcoFlow Delta Pro that can power this ridiculous air conditioner that I have sitting here. And it's 50 pounds. <clears throat> EcoFlow Delta Pro is over 100 pounds, and it's about half the size. So let's take a closer look at this thing. So we're looking at Yoshino's largest solar generator at the time of this video, and it comes in at $3,300. The kit that they sent me is the B4000 plus three of their 200 watt 20 volt solar panels that I've got right here. What I do like about the solar panels is they have this nice little button to try and keep everything together on both sides. We've got the nice Velcro kickstands. And a pouch for your cables. The MC4 connectors are wired directly into the solar panel so you can't switch those out, but you can extend them with a variety of available cables. The cables that it comes with are pretty short though, so if you want to spread these panels out, you're gonna wanna buy some extension cables. As for solar charging input, the most you can get is 600 watts, so if you went with a kit that had three of their solar panels, you could get that maximum solar input. What excites me the most is how compact it is and how lightweight it is compared to the other available options. For example, taking up the same amount of space and weight as an EcoFlow Delta Pro, you could stack two of these, which would put you at over five kilowatts of storage and eight kilowatts of output across two different devices. And the EcoFlow is only gonna get you 3,600 watts of storage and 3,600 watts of output. I also really like that this one has two wireless charging pads for your phones. And it has Wi-Fi and Yoshino has a really decent app. We can see the temperature, we can see how much power I've got. Let's go ahead and power some stuff up. And because it has Wi-Fi, we can just turn the AC on with the app. Here we go, we're putting out about 900 watts. I really like having Wi-Fi on these generators so you can monitor your solar charging and how much battery you've got left while you're out and about and running your day. So good job Yoshino on your app. You can configure the equipment timeout, 30, 60, 120, 240 minutes, or just always on for both the AC and the DC. What I am wondering is if you configure it to be always on and then the unit loses power, if when it receives a solar input, if it will turn back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and test that. All right, so I'm running a test right now. We got the AC going at 68 degrees, being powered by the solid state lithium battery from Yoshino. It's pulling 1,058 watts right now. It looks like it's gonna last about two hours. And it's currently not being charged by any solar or anything. Looks like the app gives you much better indication of how long this can run. It says we've got about two hours and 17 minutes left. While that test is running, I might as well show you how much solar I've got coming in right now to my other setup and kind of how my panels are arranged. So right now I'm getting about 517 watts of input and my studio consumes about 250 watts if I've got all the lights on. If I pump them all up to 100%, it will take closer to like 1100 watts. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, like 1,150 watts. So walking out into my backyard, you can see I've got some solar panels up on my hot tub cover there. We don't really use the hot tub right now and it's just kind of out of the way. So I laid some solar panels up there and there's one against the window into my office here. And I've got them all kind of wired up, lazily going through the window in my office. So yeah, the way I have my solar set up isn't really ideal, but it does collect about between 500 and 600 watts every hour for pretty much the entire time the sun is over it. If I rearrange them, uh, I've seen it get up to 900 watts with that array, but it doesn't really matter because I didn't use that much power in here and it's nicer to have the, all the solar panels just kind of out of the way. So as soon as this thing runs down, 
we're going to plug it into the solar and see if it turns back on. It occurred to me while I was editing this video, you might be wondering why I don't just put those solar panels on my roof. Well, I've already got about eight kilowatts of solar on my roof, but that system is grid tied. So after we had a series of power outages living in Southern California, I wanted to investigate more about battery systems, battery backup and self-sufficiency in case the grid goes down because having a grid tied solar panel system does you no good if the grid is powered off. I know that my solar array will work with the Yoshino B4000 because my array is under 60 volts and the Yoshino can handle up to 60 volts. So this thing has a pretty beefy inverter and I think we can run it down a little bit quicker. So I've plugged in my whole studio to this thing and with my lights on and that AC running we are taking up about 1300 watts but we can always crank the lights up to full power and now we'll be taking up roughly 2200 watts is only using about 50% of its capacity. This thing is powerful. Anyways, now we're gonna wait for this thing to die. I've got it set to be always on. And so we'll see once it's dead, if I plug the solar back into it, if it turns back on. I found another thing we can plug into it. There we go, 3,500 watts. This thing is cooking. I found another light I can plug in. Okay. We're now at 3,700 watts almost. Oh, there we go. So I think maybe we tripped it. Still got 40% left. I figured out what happened. Pop the circuit breaker. I guess the way to get the most output out of this device is to use the 30 amp plug. Either way, super impressive amount of output. Now, I'm not sponsored by Fairlife, but this is the best tasting protein shake. If you have any uh, tips on better tasting protein shakes, let me know. But these things, mm, we're getting close. We're down to about three minutes left. Well, it just turned off and I'm sitting here watching the app, but it still says that it's putting out uh, 2,030 watts. But obviously it has turned off. The AC has turned off. So now we have reached our moment of truth where it is turned off and we're gonna see what happens when we plug solar panels into it after it has died. What I hope happens is as soon as I plug it into those solar panels, it turns back on, the AC turns back on and it reconnects to Wi-Fi, and it resumes the settings in the way that I had it all set up. So let's see what happens. Whoosht. All right, so what happened so far is obviously it began charging. It automatically turned on, reconnected to Wi-Fi but the AC did not turn back on. So my firmware suggestion to Yoshino would be to allow there to be an option that once it receives solar input after turning off, you could have the AC turn back on too. Or maybe wait for it to reach a uh, 5% before turning the AC on. Something kind of like that. Those settings are what we want in the mobile app. On the bright side, if you were away from your homestead and you were managing your household with the mobile app, once the Yoshino B4000 died and then began to recharge with solar, it would re-automatically connect to Wi-Fi if that Wi-Fi was plugged into something else. And then you could turn on your AC power that way. But that still requires, uh, you know, wireless router be plugged into something else that's giving it power though. That's why we want the ability to have it turn AC power back on as soon as it uh, reaches a certain threshold of input. So I also noticed if I plug the Yoshino B4000 into charge and it's charging at full speed and I plug in that air conditioner, uh, it will cause the unit's AC power to stop responding. I guess it's some kind of like internal circuit breaker soft trip. It's not the actual circuit breaker on the outside. You have to toggle the AC power off and on to get it to start working again. If you're charging it at full speed and trying to get the full amount of output out of it, it might cause the AC power to trip. So the only use case that that really affects is if you're using it as a UPS for very high powered applications. Currently have the Yoshino behind me charging up and it's got about 400 watts of input and the fans are still going even though the AC inverter is turned off. I notice pretty much any time I have it charging or the AC is running like 250 watts, the fans are still going. So it's not perfectly silent. It is a more powerful piece of equipment than my other things. I wouldn't be using this in my indoor studio setup that I have in here while I'm recording sound. They don't have quite as long of battery life as the LifePo 4 batteries do. The LifePo 4 batteries, I think, are rated for 3000 or 3500 cycles. The solid state battery in this one is rated for 2500 cycles. 
cycles, which is still an incredibly long time. And you've still got a five year warranty on this. It's just not going to last quite as long as the lithium iron phosphate options. That said, a lot more people can carry this thing and get it to a place where they need it to be in order to power powerful loads. So I'm really, really excited about this thing. So I'm gonna start looking for solid state battery options because this size and weight to power output ratio is incredible. On the back of this thing, we've got our two AC outlets up to 4,000 watts, 120 volts. We've got our smart link thing, which Again, you can't use it yet, but I believe they're coming up with some uh, expansion batteries. We've got a circuit breaker, our 120 volt 30 amp, our solar input up to 600 watts and 60 volts, our AC charger and our overload switch. Now on the front here, we've got the 12 volt DC out ports, two old school USB-A ports, the single 100 watt USB-C port and the 20 watt USB-C port. We've got a nice little light here and a little Wi-Fi button. This thing, just like all the other modern solar battery generators, charges super fast. You can charge it up to like 80% in about an hour. Also, if you are a working professional and you need power on the go and you wanna throw it on a cart, this will fit a lot better than the EcoFlow Delta Pro will, although it doesn't have its own set of wheels, so you can't wheel it around like its own little dolly. Now, EcoFlow does have a more mature ecosystem of products. They, you can link two of their things together and then get like four expansion batteries and push that thing up to like 25 kilowatts. But this is the first of the solid state batteries that I've seen and their system will evolve just like EcoFlow did. That said, if you're trying to power a homestead, you're probably gonna wanna capture as much sunlight as possible. And the EcoFlow Delta Pro will allow you to get up to 1600 watts of solar input to each one of those things. And the limiting factor, I think, on the Yoshino is the 600 watts of solar input. So for that reason alone, if you depended on solar for your survival and you wanted to capture as much sunlight as possible, I'd still probably go with the EcoFlow Delta Pro. It will still take you about five hours to charge this thing up to full if you have ideal sunlight conditions and the maximum amount of solar input. But if you already had something like the EcoFlow Delta Pro and you already have your solar arranged and charging your other devices, this would be a great thing to add to your workbench because you could then just charge this off the AC output of one of your other solar generators and not necessarily rely on the solar input. Just use this as the thing that you're gonna charge up with your already existing solar system and take it with you on your truck for example. Or if you don't need that much solar input, this is a super solid option. So really, really interesting tech from Yoshino. And I'm really excited to see where they take the solid state battery tech. So if you want to get your own, there's a link to where you can find this in the description of my video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.